In this video, I want to walk you through a CFA level one exam style question on Jensen's Alpha or simply Alpha, which is uh, a topic very much related to the capital asset pricing model. Uh, so if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. If you watch the previous two videos, you will recall these figures for portfolio X, Y, and Z. We've got some performance information, including return, standard deviation, and beta. We also have the return on the market portfolio, 2.3%, its standard deviation, and a risk-free rate of return equal to 0.5. And we're asked about which portfolio offers the best performance as measured by Jensen's Alpha. Now, Jensen's Alpha is basically something that we probably had already exposure to. Um, I've definitely recorded previous videos on this, although I didn't call it alpha as such. It was all about whether a stock is generating returns in excess or below the rate of return required under the CAPM model, given its level of systematic risk. So basically, this thing called alpha, which we also call Jensen's alpha, is equal to the return on the portfolio either expected or uh, you know historically experienced minus what the cap and model would predict is the required rate of return and that's obviously a function of the risk-free rate plus the beta of that specific uh, portfolio times rm minus rf where RM is the rate of return on the market portfolio and RF is once again the uh, risk-free rate of return. And obviously, if this relationship is positive, if a portfolio is uh, generating more than what's required by uh, under the CAPM model, let me perhaps just finish this off with a nice square bracket at the end to close this off and make the formula complete. Well, if this relationship is positive, then a stock would be described as lying above the SML, the security market line. If the relationship is negative, it's uh, yielding less than what's required. And that would respectively um, lead us to conclude that the stock is either undervalued if it's above or the SML or undervalued if it's below the SML. And we've had previous questions on that comparison and whether stocks are under or overvalued. Okay, so... Let's compute this for portfolio X to start with. Its return is 2%. What would be predicted by the CAPM model? Well, um, the RF is 0.5% plus the beta on this specific portfolio being 0.8 times the rate of return on the market, which is 2.3 minus 0.5%. Close the bracket. Okay, I'm going to take my uh, phone with the calculator and quickly do this. Not really sharing my phone screen with you as there is nothing um, terribly exciting happening in terms of the computations. Uh, so let me start with this 2.3 minus 0 0.5. That's obviously 1.8 times the beta of 0 0.8. Okay, plus 0 0.5. Okay, and I see... A result equal to, let me write this down over here, it's going to be 0.06% and it's positive. So this suggests a little bit of alpha, very small, but a little bit of excess performance on a um, sort of risk adjusted basis where we as risk, we uh, take into account systematic uh, risk only. Good. Um, so better than the required rate of return from the CAPM model. How about why? Well, over here we're going to have um, the return of 4.5% minus the same thing as before, 0 0.5 plus, and the only thing that changes here is the beta, which is going to be specific to the teach portfolio, 1.6. Other than that, we've got 2.3 minus 0 0.5, just like before. So I know the term here in the um, in the bracket is 1.8. So that's 1.8 times the new beta of 1.6. Let's add 0 0.5 to that, 3.38. Okay, and this is definitely going to yield something positive. I see a positive difference of 1.12%. So this stock definitely 
yields more than what would be required under the CAPM model, given its level of systematic risk as measured by beta. So we would say that this stock is lying above the SML, the security market line, and we would also conclude that it is undervalued. Now, what about Z? <laughs> For portfolio Z, we've got 6.2%. Once again, minus square bracket 0.5% plus a beta of 2.5. And uh, same thing as before in the bracket 2.3 minus 0.5%. Close both brackets. So this is 1.8 multiplied by a beta of 2.5 plus 0 0.5, okay, minus. And for this one, I see a result which is even higher. It's positive and it's 1.2%. So that's a measure of the excess return above what's required. And that will lead me to conclude that portfolio Z is the one which performs best. It's got the best performance as measured by Jensen's alpha. So answer, See.